Hi, I'm Andy Jones, Content Editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. And welcome to our YouTube live stream today, where we are continuing our uh, series on color mixing and color theory. And today we are going to be mixing and matching. Uh, so I know this is something that many of you are seeing on uh, the internet, and we are going to do some color matching today. So I have here a color wheel, so we can just do a super quick review of what the color wheel actually is. It is a representation of the 12 colors that you can see when you refract light through a prism. So at the top of our color wheel, we have yellow, and then if we move to the right on our color wheel, we go through orange to red, and then from red we go to violet, from violet to blue, to green, and back to yellow. So half of the color wheel is what we would call our warm colors, and half of the color wheel is what we would call cool colors. The warm colors tend to have more yellow in them, and the cool colors tend to have more blue in them. So that's an easy way to kind of imagine whether a color is warm or cool. But if you remember from a previous live stream, uh, we have talked about the fact that color is always relative. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that very quickly as I move my palette of paint into view. So what I have here is um, kind of a basic primary uh, example of some colors. I have a cool yellow and I have a warm yellow. So both of these colors are considered warm, but this yellow is obviously cooler in temperature than this yellow. So I have a warm red and I have a cool red. I have what's going to sound funny, I have a warmer blue and a cooler blue. So this blue is, does not have as much um, uh, kind of uh, purpley tones in it, and this one does. So this one has, um, it's just a little bit warmer in relation to this blue. This blue is cooler than this red, so color always is relative. And then I also have some black on my palette. So one of the best color exercises that I think you can do is to have to match a color. So I went to our local home improvement store and I snagged an assortment of paint chips. And mercifully, they don't charge you for all of these, uh, but I did pull out a selection of colors. Some of them are pretty interesting and some of them are just kind of, I mean, I. I'm sure that this color is a great color, although I don't know why anyone would really want to put it on a wall. It's not really that kind of color. But it is interesting as far as color mixing goes. So don't try to get super bright, saturated colors to try to mix. You want to set yourself up to figure out what you need to mix together to make a particular color. So let's start with this color. And we're going to continually ask ourselves, what does this need? What's missing? All right, so we are going to try to match this um, low intensity, high value red color. So that's what this is. It's super low intensity, so I know that we don't need um, to stick with our bright colors. So we are going to start out with a little bit of red since that's our color family that we're working in, that's our hue. And I'm going to start also with a chunk of white because we need a very light value color. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna add a little bit of red to my white to start getting me a light value color. And for this, you could do it with a brush or a palette knife. I like to mix with a palette knife and see kind of where I'm going. Then I've got a little puddle of paint should I need to kind of change directions. But this is still missing a little bit of red. I want to try to get close to the value of this color. And it's going to be darker than I'm thinking. So I know, but I also want to dull this color down at the same time. One thing I could do is I could add black to my 
red color, but that's going to make it more violet. So I'm thinking I need to add green to this, but I don't have a green, so I'm going to quickly make a green from yellow and blue. And if you're doing a color mixing exercise, you can put out all sorts of colors that you want to have on your palette to mix from. It probably would have been a good idea to put out some green, but I did not do that ahead of time, so I can mix a green from yellow and blue. And it doesn't matter what colors you have out here. Uh, any light yellow, any medium yellow would, great, would work great, any bright red, any dark red, uh, a cool blue, a warm blue. It doesn't matter the particular color you have as long as you have those general um, uh, types of colors out. So I'm going to add a little bit of this green over here, which should start to dull this pink color down. And I'm always wiping my palette knife so I don't really contaminate my color on the palette. And being able to mix and match a color by figuring out what is the missing component is a very important part of how to implement color theory so that it's not just uh, some abstract notion. I mean, I could tell you we need to start with a red, we need to lighten it up to make it a lighter value, and then tone the color by adding either a complement or an earth color or black or something like that to it. But saying all of that and doing that is very different. All right, so Emily is here with me in the studio, and she's moderating for me. So I don't know, do we have any questions so far, Emily? Well, Andy, we just have some people that are really excited to watch you do this color mixing right now. We have people telling us where they're from. We've got people that are from, uh, let's see here, North Carolina, Puerto Rico. We've got somebody from Canada. So quite a lot of probably fans of yours that are coming in <laughs> and seeing you on YouTube now. Well, it, it's always fun to have that. Um, I'm just going to do a quick little test here to show you that we are nowhere near where we need to be. And that's okay. We're starting with this and we're going to get there eventually. So I'm going to add more red because I need this to be darker. Better to add color incrementally rather than add a big chunk of something all at once and being so far off the mark. All right, so what we're going, we're just going to keep checking our color as we add things to it and see what we're missing. All right, so we're getting, we're much closer now than we were there. So you can see a marked improvement. Still, we miles to go before we get there. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more of my red to this. And Andy, this is such a fun technique to, or well, I guess it's just something to know in your knowledge, but if you were wanting to match home decor to your wall color, you could do this as well and make yourself a batch of paint and you could have the, you know, just for styling purposes too. Of course, this is, you know, there will always be a time when you need to try to match a color or you're looking for a specific color and you don't have it. This is the way to get you to your desired color. All right, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this darker red in here just for fun to see what happens. I have it on my palette, so I might as well give it a try. And sometimes you can just tell by looking. We're getting a little bit closer here, but we're not nearly uh, dark enough, so I'm going to add some more of my reds to this. And again, lots of trial and error, and we will keep getting closer and closer to this, always keeping in the back of our mind to add color incrementally very small amounts because you don't want to get too much in one direction or another. It's easier to circle the block and come back than it is to be miles down the road when you realize you've made a wrong turn. All right, so once again, just checking our color. Now we're a little bit better in value here. We're still too light, uh, but we're closer in value, but this is way too pink. So I know I'm going to need to tone this down a little bit. So I'm going to add another bit of green to this. It's like a delicate dance, Andy. It is. It's like um, it's like uh, adding spices to your sauce. 
You might need a little extra salt. You might need a little extra pepper. You don't want to add too much of anything as you go because you want it to always taste good. So I'm going to add some more green here, toning this color down. And I'm probably going to need more green. So I'm going to stop and just shift gears and make another little puddle of green. I just did not mix up enough when I started this. I'm going to tell you, Andy, when you pulled out that swatch, I did not think that you were going to need quite as much green. Well, green is going is is the complementary color to red. Let's just look at our color wheel again. So if we are looking at our color wheel, opposite on the color wheel from green is red. So adding red to, I mean, adding green to red will immediately dull that color down. Anytime you add a color that's opposite on the color wheel, you are going to uh, tone that color down. And it's desaturating it, correct? Yes, we're desaturating it. We are lowering the intensity, reducing the chroma. However you want to call it, that's what we're doing. We're making sure that this pink is not bright pink. It's dull pink. No neon today, huh? Uh, not in this puddle of paint. <laughs> <laughs> but color mixing and matching is always figuring out what's missing. What do I need to add to get me closer to... Oh, wait a minute. It's getting pretty close there. Wait a minute. Look at I that. think that is... Looking wow. so good. I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay, for our <laughs> purposes today, we are really super, super close uh, to that. It might need at this point, a tiny, tiny amount of white to lighten that up just a little bit. But Andy, on this screen, I can't tell that you put <laughs> it's, paint on there. It's, it's very hard to, that's, and that's the goal of what we're doing. Yeah. So we're trying to come up with this. So basically, we needed to make a, take a red, get it the correct value, and then tone that value with green to make it dull. All right, so that worked out well. Whew. <laughs> the, the pressure of doing this, I can tell you it's tremendous. Um, so let's try another colorway here and see. I'm not sure how, how we're going to do on this. Like I said, it's always uh, kind of up in the air. But we are going to try to mix uh, now this particular color. And it's a nice teal color. So I know that when I'm looking on my color wheel, I don't have a teal on my color wheel. The closest color that I would have on my color wheel would be a blue-green color. So I know that I have probably a medium value blue-green color that is not terribly saturated. So that's our, that's goal. our goal. Yeah. So we're looking for a uh, low chroma, mid-value blue-green color. All right, lots of things to remember there. I'm going to start off with some blue. And I'm going to add a little yellow to that, which is going to give me a blue-green color. And I'm not sure whether warm yellow or cool yellow, so I'm just kind of mixing these two yellows together. and We'll see where this starts to get us. Obviously, we didn't jump up a lot in value there, and that's quite all right. Just going to add a little bit more of this yellow here to make sure that I'm really getting a nice um, blue-green color, and then we'll adjust our value by adding some white to this, and then we'll really get a much better idea what kind of color we have going on. So again, mixing our color, asking ourselves what's missing. Obviously, Something to lighten this color up is what's missing. So we'll add some white, and we'll just add it in incrementally. Don't want to overdo anything with this. As Emily said, it's kind of a balancing act, and we want to make sure that we don't tip the scales too much in any 
direction at all. Now, I will say, Andy, that looking at the swatch that you have here, th in theory, couldn't you do all three of those colors with the hues that you have in front of you? Yes. What would be the easiest thing to do would be to mix the darker color and then lighten it with incrementally. Mm -hmm. okay. But we're just starting at this top one. So if I match this one, then I would have to add more blue and yellow to make this color and then even more blue and yellow to make this color. So we're just, we're starting with this one, only trying to match one color at a time <laughs> because we've only got so much time here. The takeaway from today's lesson is always ask yourself what's missing. If you start with a color and it's not getting anywhere close to where you think it ought to go, maybe you need to stop and start again and ask yourself, what was missing the last time I tried this? I think that's a great point, Andy, because oftentimes I don't know, like maybe I'm heavy handed and I just didn't catch myself when I needed to add a little bit less. So it's so fun to see you just gently <laughs> adding these subtle differences to your paint pile. And it makes that big of a difference when being heavy handed, you just go too far. Yeah, you, you, have, you learn to go cautiously. All right, I know this is not going to be the right color, but I will tell you that your eye cannot judge color even at this small a distance. You have to put the color on. Side by side. Actually on. On. On is the way to go. And this is not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I do need to add a little bit of um, red-orange to this because I've got a blue-green color opposite on the color wheel would be red orange so I'm going to I've added yellow and I could just add some yellow and some red but that gets to be a little bit more confusing so I'm going to make a red orange color here I'm trying to make this as understandable for you as I possibly can Andy and, it's also entertaining well is uh, until you get into it it's, it's a lot of theory and concept and stuff like that. And if you want, to, I mean, I always like to kind of equate things so that you get a better idea about this. So color mixing or color theory is to cooking as throwing together a stew is to baking a cake. Baking a cake is very, uh, it's a science. If you, you just can't willy-nilly start throwing some stuff together and expect to get a cake that's nice and fluffy and moist because you have to have the right amount of flour, uh, eggs, liquids, fats, leavening agents, all those things have to be in the right proportion. The same thing when you're mixing color. Everything has to be in the right amounts. And so it is very precise and you have to do it very carefully. So I'm adding a little bit of my yellow-orange color here because I want to lower the intensity, reduce the chroma, desaturate this color. And there is a whole specific vocabulary for this, and that's why I'm always using those, um, as some people would say, those fancy art terms. It's just the way you need to describe um, color. It's like describing medical things. They, they have a medical, line, uh, a medical vocabulary, and it's better when everybody's using the same vocabulary. All right, so let's check and see what we've done there. All right, we've gotten the color a little closer, a little uh, duller, greener color. It's still too dark, so we're going to add a little bit of white to this. What does it need? It needs to be lighter in value, so we're going to lighten it in value by adding some white. And keep in mind that this is color theory that um, has to do with the mixing of paint. So it doesn't, ooh, ooh. We're, getting, we're getting very, very close there. Wow. I'm thinking it needs just a tiny bit more white. It is different than if you talk about color theory using light. So uh, people who do a lot of work on computers, they have um, um, RGB um, or CMYK uh, color system to use, which is, uh, CMYK is uh, cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, and 
black. So we didn't, when color theory was originally getting off the ground uh, back when Isaac Newton was around, they did not have magenta. They did not have the color cyan. So uh, I've watched a couple of videos of some younger artists who just bemoan <laughs> the red, yellow, blue um, primary colors because they only know magenta, yellow, and cyan. So, <clears throat> excuse me, there was one young artist who was just going on and on and on about uh, don't believe people when they say that you can't mix red and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, maybe if you had been around before the invention of magenta, you would realize that you couldn't mix red. But synthetic pigments now allow you it's to different. mix it. Yeah, yeah, it's very different. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more white to this, just lightening this a smidge. So, I mean, color theory's changed, and there are there are more color theory models out there than simply the traditional primary red, yellow, blue. Um, there's the Munsell system, which is incredibly scientific. Now, I see what I've done. I had something really good here, and I added a couple of dabs of white to that, <coughs> excuse me, and now it's too light. So let me go back to what we had before, which was looking super good, and we'll mix some of the super good color with a little less white, and I think this might get us to our destination. So, Andy, I think just your skill and oh, experience. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm all excited about <laughs> this. So, yes, we've we've matched that color here on this this one right here. So, we've had success. All right. So, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Emily. I was no, so excited fine. that we we, I'm we matched for it. You. I was just saying that I think your experience. You know, for me, if I was trying to do this, I would have use the palette knife to mix my entire puddle. But I think in your experience, you only worked in a small section on your palette mm -hmm. and you were able to like almost go back. And well, yes, I, and I did because here's the original uh, puddle mixture. Here's an intermediate one. And then when I was just trying to mess around and get it the right value, I only lightened part of it because I knew if I didn't get it right then, then I could go back to where I was. Because you were so close. I was, I knew, I, and I knew I was getting close. So, uh, like I said, it's easier just to circle the block than it is to go miles down the road. So this is how I circled back very quickly to where mm -hmm. I was close, but no cigar. But now we've uh, done a very good job there of matching that color. Yes, let's, <coughs> let's uh, let in all of that excitement, yes. eagerness you worked so hard for. So well, great job, Andy. It is one of those fun things that we've had two successes here. And you can do the same thing with any color that you find in that. Uh, Go to your local you home, know, improvement store. home improvement store, pick out a couple that you like and have some fun. Yeah, you can mix all of this stuff. Remember, mix little amounts of paint at a time mix slowly. You don't necessarily need to mix your entire puddle of paint. When you get close, just kind of move some of it off to the side to adjust it a little bit. And you don't necessarily just have to work with your primary colors, black and white. You could put out several different shades of green if you wanted to. It doesn't matter what colors you do because the principle behind color theory is always going to be the same. You are going to figure out from looking at your color wheel, what you need. If you need to dull a color, always go opposite on the color wheel. Adding the opposite or the complementary color will tone that color immediately for you. So if you don't know the color wheel in your head and can't remember all the positions of the colors, and that will come over time, have a color wheel close by, whether it's one that you have carefully and painstakingly mixed yourself or one that you buy um, online somewhere or at your local art supply store. But a color wheel is valuable. Uh, don't think that it's not, even though it's printed color and not paint, it will serve you very, very well when you are trying to mix and match color. So I think that's going to be it for today. And I thank you for joining us. And we will be back next Friday with another live stream here on YouTube.